Now, there's a few other ways of doing this. We do have a numeric scale method up here. If we go into the option box, this is a little bit not that intuitive to use at first, but it's basically, this is the scale amount and this is the pivot. So at the moment, if we select all these curves, the pivot is at zero. We could type in one there and this is time scale pivot. So if we wanted to scale that by two, we're doing it from frame one, time scale of two, hit apply, and that's doubling the, the length of that. So it's very handy to be able to scale numerically and that's one way of doing it. If we wanted to do that by time, it's just the same thing, but we've got our pivot. So if we wanted our pivot to be at 10, we could type 10 there, that will pivot it from that. And then we can scale it this way two times. We'll actually scale it two times down from a pivot point of 10 as you can see there. So really important that you get head around that. It's very easy to use, but just worth mentioning because these are not always the most intuitive things to read. The next way that we can do scaling, which is quite handy, and this is only in the later versions of Maya, is that we can do a, we can do a lattice, but this one's a little bit easier. This region tool here, scale, there's keys like that. So we can just grab it and it's very intuitive. Rather than the R key is great and it's really quick, but it can be a little bit hard to click there. And then we're trying to line up this end here it can be a little bit difficult. So sometimes just a bit easier to click on this one and we can do it that way. That will also value scale that way, which is nice and easy. That's a good one. We've got the lattice tool here which will do a similar thing, but it just requires a lot more clicks. Like we actually have to hold down the shift key and make all these guys yellow and we can shift move those that way. So that's doing it within a lattice environment. But you could double click on that and change the amount of lattices to be one and one. And we've got something pretty similar to this guy here, but it's just a little bit more difficult to use. So the lattice is there. It's great if you've got a lot of motion capture and a lot of keyframes, the lattice can come in really handy. So I'll just reset that to three and three, close that. And then the last way that we've got, which is really handy, it's becoming more and more handy, is this retime tool. So to get out of any of these modes, we just hit Q, which is this guy up here, Q. The retime tool is really great because we can click on this guy here. It says double click to add multiple retime markers. So we just double click there and we can double click there. And now we can click them and move them around. So we can move from either end like that, or we can move side to side. So this is this is only for timing. This is not for scaling value keys. You can get rid of them there and we can put another one in here. And you can see it will move the keys beyond the marker as well. So that retime tool is a really great one. And you can put in multiple retime markers as well. And it will work on all the keys, not just the selected keys, which is a little bit of a bummer, but that's uh, that's it there.